day two, gullet number two. But let's kick things off with some words from Eric. Golf, you feel smitten until you discover you're sitting in that divot. It's not been replaced, or you had a lovely wee wedge, or that nasty wee hedge, but you're in a bunker, and it's then you remember you've been in the Saint Mayor and a French Legionnaire. In fact, you're an honorary member. But the thing is, to you, it doesn't matter if a dozen shots later you're trying to get out of that trap because you see, you've got the bug, even though you look like a mug, and the golfing world knows that you're crap. Good morning. Oh, camera and batteries. Some batteries arriving. <laughs> How are we? Are you, you doing takeaway coffee now? Can do, yeah. <laughs> take, take away the mug. Take away the mug. Yeah, Perfect, I, I, I am the mug. <laughs> are we good? We're good. Are you coming down? I'll come and see you up there. Yeah, yeah. No so, uh, I'll try and just borrow a buggy as well. Yeah, okay. And then come to the back of you. So, yeah. so just bring snickeries. I'll bring nothing. I don't need to bring anything. Um, yeah. As far as golf courses go, there's views and then there's views, and the top of Gullen Hill is a view. It's hole number four, and that's when you get to the top, and this is what opens up. Firth of Fourth, Muirfield over that side in the far distance there, where we were yesterday, which was uh, Craigie Law, you got Killspindy, Gullen number three, Gullen number one, and today we're on Gullen number two. And it's hard to wipe a smile off a golfer's face when he gets to this tee box. I'm going to pay reference to uh, the quality of the greens on number two, three and number one because they're all priced differently in terms of playing. They've all got, uh, they, they sit, they've got different levels of standing. Obviously, number one held the Scottish Open, so rightly so, it sits on top of the pile. But in terms of the quality and the, um, the condition of each of the three courses, to me, they, they, they rarely differ. I mean, they literally are immaculate. It's a credit to Stuart Duff and his team here do an amazing job. And like I said, where you'd expect to see differences uh, from one down to three, that's not the case at all. The greens are pure every time you play them. And when I say every time you play them, it doesn't matter what time of the year either. So there's no excuses. I can't miss that one. The layout of Gullen number two was laid by two-time Open Championship winner Woody Park Jr. in 1898. Measuring 6,396 yards, the course has hosted final Open qualifying for the Open Championship. There's no fewer than 107 bunkers laid out on the course, and holes seven and eight from number two featured in a hybrid course with Gullen number one that provided the test for the Scottish Open in 2018. Hey, so Malcolm joined us uh, again from uh, yesterday's video and uh, you just mentioned uh, a phrase that I loved. Uh, it was a cradle of golf? The cradle of golf, yeah. yeah. Why is, is that? This is where it all started. Yeah. The, um, Are you upsetting people over in St Andrews? Oh, you? yeah, St Andrews is the home of golf. I love you, St Andrews, fantastic, but Scotland's the home of golf, but this is the cradle of golf. This is where golf started. Yeah. Mary Queen of Scots lived in Edinburgh. She played golf down here. And the wee nine-hole track in Musselburgh with the race course around yeah, about yeah. it, second open was played there. Yeah. That's where the first hole was cut, is the size we all play we'll into play them now. Me. And that tube that they cut it with is in Royal Musselburgh. And Royal Musselburgh is the oldest uh, continually played for trophy in the world. So, and again, yesterday then we picked up um, at uh, the Glen. That's actually the first club that let ladies in. Right. So um, this area is just absolutely steep, With steeped and steeped in history. Golf in history, yeah. Yeah, I mean the golf courses you can see around here. I mean Scotland's golf coast here, with 21 courses and five across there. We don't talk about them too much, but um, there's some quite nice. Not courses. this week anyway. No, I've got to go there. Next I know, week. I know, I know. But we, we got we we're, so we're on Golan Two. We've got Golan Number One, uh, Golan Number Three, and then over the bay there you'll see some. First of all, uh, there's some views of Edinburgh we've got in the distance over there. Yeah, so you've got Arthur's Seat um, and in the in the crag little lump there. Then you can see the skyline down to Edinburgh Castle and actually playing Golan One. I think it's on the 10th. There's a mound that actually silhouettes 
uh, Arthur's Seat as well. Mm. And then coming out, you start off with you know, the nine hole course at, uh, at Musselburgh and at Royal Musselburgh and Moncton Hall, Moncton Hall break course. That was the last open qualifier because they changed the open qualifiers. So that right. was the last of the old fashioned open qualifiers. Then you move out to Long Nidri, Harry Colt course, um, and then Craigie Law, Kilspindy, Loch Ness. Yes, yes. And then we've got Gullen 1, 2, 3, we've got, we've got Archer here, we've got Renaissance. Yeah, got Gullen 1, 2 and 3. And Gullen 1, 2, 3 really interesting because they're only, that's the order they were built in. Not, right. not better or worse course. Ah, right, just reference that. Just reference. Yeah. So yeah. Gullen 1 um, open qualifier, when the, the Scottish Open happened, and then two holes, this one and the last one you played, were part of the composite course. Mm. A lot of locals think two is a better golf course, Yeah. especially off the backs. And three is possibly now one of the most underrated golf courses in Scotland. We have the World Hickory Championships quite a lot here, and Gullen 3 and Kilspindy, even Gullen 2, are great. I mean, these courses are all designed for hickory golf. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, length is, you know, it's all about length now, and these courses are more about thinking yeah, it than yeah. length. Well, we'll end that bit there because we've got hickory clubs with us, and that's where we'll go to next. I cool. think a little bit of a challenge on Gullen number two with some hickory golf clubs. That should be fun. Up for that, up for that. Hickory challenge it's a bit of a challenge it's 196 we just got this and into this flag and into the breeze but we've got is this a driver effectively it's a kind of fairway wood yeah, yeah. i mean they're all I, I i'm just getting into hickory so i don't know all the bits and bobs but boris who runs a jack white shop yeah yeah clubs up in the village which is fantastic but a uh, little bit of loft but the great thing with hickory is really slow you swing down really soft hands and let the club head do the work a lot more whippy lot, yeah more whippy, a lot whippier so you can work the ball a lot more so we're into the wind, slow down that swing. Slow down that swing. And, and shut your eyes, <laughs> close your eyes. <laughs> Couldn't you have picked an easier hole? Tell you about this ball. Do you know what? I don't care where it's finished because that was absolutely perfect. Th yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah. I know we all play golf for different reasons, but uh, for me, this is the reason I play golf. I've just played a par three with a Hickory Golf Club, but then I just walk down to this green, and wherever I look in front of me right now, it's just it's heaven. It's just absolutely stunning. So I found the bunker. You found the green. Yeah, mine's a local ball. <laughs> But you've got you've got one for the definite win. One for the definite win. And with my, perhaps, uh, perhaps two for it. My old hickory putter that Marshy gave me. You know Andrew Marshall? Yeah. He's a great hickory golfer. I have to confess to using a modern club out the bunker. I forgot the rule. We <laughs> never saw that. We never saw that. Oh, go on. Go on! Well, that's good enough. Take that one Almost. away. Almost. So you got your three? Got my three. So I've got uh, I've got this for the half. This is quite a bit different, the putter. Isn't it? Heavy head. Oh, you like it. Whoa! <laughs> oh, I thought I had that. Well, you had that. So the Hickory, the, 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 the Hickory Championships goes to <laughs> Mr. Duck. Hold on.
There's no question that Gullen Number no. Two is is a championship standard course, and it's um, you know it asks questions of your game. It's not that type of course where you're going to stroll around the place. You're going to expect a bit of a breeze. It's linksy conditions, so again, trying to play those kind of shots that we've seen over the last few days. But in terms of uh, sort of how penal it is, I think it's it's a fair uh, chance to get around and. Fairways, are, they're generous enough to be honest with you and the only time you're going to get punished is uh, well, when the drive ain't good enough or wherever shot it is you play. So it's a fair but an honest test of golf and I think, you know, again, that's what you want, isn't it? But it's, uh, it's no walk in the park, don't get me wrong. I can honestly say that's the best drive of it today. That's huge, by my standards at least anyway. It's still bounding. So when you do find the middle, they uh, they go a bit, but if you don't, and I've hit a few that happens, they go in the rough and then it's hard. I'm gonna play this, because I don't know uh, the yardage off the tee, but this, uh, it was my best drive of the day. I got 146 in on a par five, and that don't happen to me very often. Don't get me wrong, it's downhill. Don't do that, and don't follow it up with that swing. That's not a bad one, though. That's not a bad one. Are we going to be putting for eagle? Oh, do you know what? Go on, ball! Go on, ball! <laughs> That's close to the flag. Those linksy conditions are talked about. It's travelled past the flag. The big camber right across in front of me, and it's, uh, yeah. Well, that's that's still a lot of work in it, to be honest with you. But, come on, finish on a high. No, it's too weak. Ah, it's too weak. Well, it was an eagle putt, it was a good effort. But we'll have to settle for a one-handed birdie. It's a good job that went in. I'm gonna finish things off at 17, another spectacular view, and that seems to have been all we've seen in the three days that I've been on another fantastic trip to East Lothian. I love playing these hickory clubs, so I'm gonna uh, try and finish things off with another decent drive, but with a hickory club. Ah, oh, yeah, that's not bad. I think it's going to end up in the rough on the right hand side. But still, it's been an absolute pleasure. Right, so seeing as I uh, finished with four birdies in a row to finish today's round, Malcolm suggested he would buy me four whiskies for each of those. So uh, you're going to talk me through a whiskey tasting. I'm going, to do, I'm going to do a kind of whiskey tasting with a difference. Um, just to, how you do, taste whiskey, how you make it a bit more fun, a bit more approachable for ladies, um, how the glasses work. And I'm going to start off with the drink is required as a publican. Yeah. It's a drink called Clear Guinness. Okay. So you've got your Clear Guinness here. Fantastic. And a little swirl of that in it, by. What a great start. And it just cleans your palate out. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is water and whiskey. You'll okay. top a lot of the boy, you shouldn't put ice in whiskey, you shouldn't put too much water in whiskey, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this. How about you should do what you want yeah. and what you enjoy? So the first thing I'm going to show you is um, how maybe people don't like whiskey might learn, learn, learn to appreciate it. So if you just pick that up and smell it, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I want you to put that over the glass. Yeah. So what we're doing now, when you make whiskey, you call the faints and they all rise up and go over the top and that's, they turn back into liquid and you get the lovely whiskey and that's the separation stage. So what, because you've got alcohol here now, it's all going up and burning around and burning around. When you put your nose in a glass of whiskey, very often you get a very burning sensation yeah, yeah, of the alcohol. Off, yeah, yeah. So what's happening now is all the lovely flavours and smells are collecting at the top. Yeah. So what I want you to do now is pick it up. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to slide it off gently and smell. I keep your nose just up. There you go. No, no, no. Oh, it's a lot softer, isn't it? A lot softer. Now you're getting all the lovely flavours yeah, yeah. coming out and coming around. Yeah, it's really interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, because it was harsh the first. Very harsh first. Yeah. So that's what puts people off, especially girls. Yeah, yeah. And they go up. Oh. Oh. And now, don't do the breathing in. Now do a little sip of whiskey. Yeah, I think so. 
Sorry. Much more open. Well, it, between the first sip and the third sip, there's a massive change. A huge change. Softens it up completely. Softens it up completely. With Len Kinchy. Is we're going to give you an entirely different glass. We're still on the same whiskey, though, aren't we? Same whiskey. Yeah, yeah. So, pick that one up and smell it. Okay. Pick that one up and smell it. Much more mild, much yeah, more yeah. delicate. So this Again, is because of the. This is channeling up. So yeah, this yeah. is taking all those faints. It's keeping your nose away. This has got more air. Yeah. So it's it's dispersing yeah, more yeah. quickly. So it's a softer feel. Yeah. This is the old traditional. Yeah, yeah. Whiskey glass. Totally, yeah. And you put some water in. So you put yeah. that water in in here. You've got a very soft, long drink. Yeah. Or becoming a long drink. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So again, even the taste. It's a very small sip of this. We don't have to finish these till later. If I do, it could be a strange end to the video, <laughs> or a short end to the video. Short end. And now you taste this one out here. Like two different drinks. Two different drinks, isn't it? Whiskey tour. Um, and you know, all, all the places you stay, I mean, you come in here, I mean, all want you come to Ducks, but you've also got the Nether Abbey in North Berwick. Um, you've got um, Garton Lodge up on the hill up yeah, there. Yeah. Marine Hotel's just been taken over and getting done up. Grey Walls with, the route, with, with um, Albert Roof um, Enterprises run that. Uh, the Dunmuir and Dunbar. There's some great places, yeah, very yeah. friendly and places. And all plenty of whiskey there. Yeah, and they'll all look after you. Is that your other... Um, um, you just put that on the side, you can finish that later. That's yours, that one. Is that my one? Yeah, You can't yours. finish that later. I've never <laughs> Being old doesn't make it better, it's just yeah. different. So I, I, I'm not a great fan of very old whiskies. I, I feel they've lost some of their fruits and they go more like other spirits, brandies and so on. Like Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue that one. So Glenfork is 15. Wait, wait. Again, a very big difference between the uh, that and what we've just tried. Oh, the Glen completely. And not better or worse. No, no. Different. Well, I'll, I'll tell you. Well, you tell me. We good? We're good. Apart from me apparently being bad. A very different mouthfeel. That's so different from, I don't know, than what we just had. It's, it's a bit different than a lot of whiskies that I've tried before, to be honest with you. For me, this is, this has got everything going for it. It's got, it's got weight, but it's not too heavy. It's kind of caramelly, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's toasty, but it's not. Um, it's got a lovely, it's a lovely mouthfeel. See, to be honest with you, smelling it, it's, it tastes, it, it, it smells like, sorry, it's going to be really quite pungent. Punchy. Punchy. Yeah. Drinking it, it's got a lot of flavour in it, but it's not, it's not over it's the not top. Harsh, is it? it's, it's really, great. I think it's really, really, yeah, really balanced. Very nice. Really, really balanced. Balance is the word. What are your thoughts on the, uh, the hip flask um, being in the bag during a game of golf? Essential. Yes. Absolutely essential. And in terms of whiskies, Scottish, Irish, American? Well, there's no question that whisky in Scotland is the best. I mean, um, Ireland. Um, I'm surprised you said that. Really. Well, yeah, Ireland yeah. distilled it three times, or you know, they have to. They have more goes at making it work than we do because they don't really understand. And then the English. Well, I mean, they're making it, but for God's sake, come on! I love you, England. I do. Have I you do. tried Welsh whiskey? Now that's where you. Welsh are whiskey. Now, 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 now we're getting into real, real. I mean, just the idea of Welsh whiskey. Oh, is this? So we have the this, odd trophy here. Is this, my, is this for winning today? This is for winning today. Is this Congratulations, for four, four Andy. Four birdies on the trot. Four birdies on the trot. Uh, right, well, as ever, thank you to Malcolm, and uh, I'll cheers with my, my. Can I? I I'm going to pick a favourite. Pick a favourite, yeah. What my favourite was this. Glenn, fifteen, same as me. Ah, oh, there you go. That was beautiful. That was. We have to clink glasses. That was very nice. John Grant, you win again. No, it was very nice. That is. Beautiful. John Grant, is John Grant, Glenn Farkless, Whiskey and Friends. Hasty back. Cheers. But, you know, there is another thing missing. Hmm. I mean, you've got the best looking assistant going. Tracy, I think you should come and do a cameo appearance in here. And taste whiskey.
That's beautiful. She's going no, no, no like this. She's looking beautiful in the background being the unofficial. She's trying to make me look good. <laughs> me and you look good. That's, that's, that's a, a tough job. Task. If you have 20 more of them, we might look after you. Exactly, exactly.